Good morning, everybody. Good morning, teacher. Good morning, Good morning teacher. teachers. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Hello, everybody. Good morning. So Good today. Morning. Good morning, teacher. teacher. Michael. Um, Good morning, hello. I heard that you guys had a great lesson with uh, teacher Brendan last week. Uh, and today uh, I'm going to be teaching you guys about the structure of a debate, the rules and the roles that uh, all of the speakers and the different participants play. And we've got a great little, um, great little breakout room exercise for you that should help you uh, learn to prepare for a debate with your team. Okay. So I'm going to be using the whiteboard a lot today, so bear with me as I try and figure this thing out. Okay. okay. Ông hỏi lâu quá à Trời ơi, mẹ mới nói là ngồi như kia không chịu Ok, so First of all Sorry I apologize. I can't write and uh, I can't type and talk very well. So if I go silent all of a sudden, that's just so that I can write some notes on the board for you. Um, I am not sure. Sure. Uh, because this is not uh, Mr. Brendan's uh, week to teach, uh, he might be enjoying his Sunday off or he could be lurking somewhere in the call if he's decided to join in on this lesson, but he might just join in this afternoon. Okay, so... The first topic that we want to talk about is the structure of an AP, of an uh, Asian parliamentary debate. Uh, and Asian parliamentary debate, that's just the format of debate that we'll be teaching in this course because it is uh, the most common uh, format of debate used in debating competitions. Okay, so Asian parliamentary debate or AP debate, uh, as it's sometimes called, uh, is the most common format of debate used in competitions around the world today. Okay, so AP debate has two teams with three members each, and their main goal is to cross-argue or clash on a given topic. So um, I will explain some, I'll explain all of the important terminology uh, a little bit later.
Okay, so uh, one team argues. Uh, sorry, one team argues for the topic of the. Uh, All right, one team agree uh, agrees with. My head is all over the place this morning. One team agrees with the topic of the debate, and argues in its favour, and the other team disagrees with the topic and argues against it. Yes, Olivia, do you have a question? Well, it is sometime in the debate they set to you a questions and. Then the other team says yes, and maybe sometimes it's happened that the other team think it's yes too to their thinking. They said yes, but maybe in their role play, they said is they have to act no. So how can we force against? If we didn't have the That's main a... ideas. That's actually a very good question, Olivia. So... Olivia has just asked me, uh, what happens if during a debate, the two teams find themselves agreeing with each other when they're supposed to be arguing? So very good question, Olivia. So the purpose of a debate, and this is where it gets a little bit, this is where it gets a, a little bit tricky at first. But once you've compared, once you've participated in a few debates and you understand how it works, uh, it gets a lot easier uh, to deal with. But basically, when you debate, you're not you're not actually on the team that you actual that you agree with in real life. So, for example, um, I'm just gonna pick. I'm just gonna pick a really. Uh, a really random topic. So the topic I'll pick is it is okay to walk up and punch somebody else at random. So me personally, I don't think that's ever okay. I don't think you should just walk up to somebody random and just punch them for no reason. It's not very nice. You could hurt them. Lots of reasons for it. However, if that is the topic of a debate, and I'm put on the affirmative team, uh, which means that I'm the team that agrees with. Yep. Where did? Oh, there it is. That was quite bizarre. But yeah, so um, if I'm put on the team that agrees with the topic, then it doesn't matter how I feel personally, even though I really disagree with the topic. If I'm put on the affirmative team, I then have to find arguments and evidence and logic that's uh, that agrees with the team that I'm on, not necessarily that agrees with how I really feel about it. So sometimes when you're in a debate, you might be made to argue for a point of view that you don't personally agree with, the point of the debate is to uh, learn and practice your research skills, develop your presentation skills, and to deliver the argument as convincingly as possible uh, without, uh, yeah, uh, it, and that's based on the team you've been put on. So I'll just add that little note here. Okay.
Oh, I don't know how I got muted there. Um, okay, so I've just added the note from Olivia's question there that you won't always be on the same team that you really agree with. So that is an important thing that you'll have to uh, come to terms with is that sometimes you'll be forced to defend and argue for points of view that you don't actually agree with. Okay, so teams will pre uh, will present one substantive speech in alternating order, and we'll go through this in more detail shortly, but this is just like a, a quick version of how a debate runs. So the teams will present a substantive speech in alternating order. So we'll have the proposition team speaker one, opposition team speaker one, Proposition team speaker two, propos uh, opposition speaker two, so on and so forth. Uh, and then at the end uh, of the debate, each team will select one member uh, to deliver a reply speech. And uh, so, yeah, we'll go through uh, all of that in uh, a bit more detail. Tina, yes. Uh, like when you said like um they will choose one player one 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 speaker for the reply speech it's, didn't they choose it like all the time which means like they like they do like a team meeting and then they like choose like okay this person will do it all the time doesn't it do like that that's correct tina so uh yeah so what tina said is the way that that works is that the each team will select the speaker themselves that delivers the reply speech. So yeah, that that is one of the decisions that the teams get to make. Alice, do you have a question? So uh, how to choose a a member of a team to present the substantive speech? So we're just about to get to that. Uh, so this so this first bit was uh, was just like a, an overview. We're going to now go into uh, a bit more specific detail about how each team performs. So give me just one minute to set up this whiteboard, please.
Amen. Okay, so the proposition team or the team uh, that agrees with the topic, uh, I've marked them in blue, and the opposition team or the team that disagrees with the topic, uh, I've marked in red. Okay, beautiful. Now, each speaker of each team actually has a specific job they're supposed to do. So it's not enough for each speaker to just stand up and say, okay, so here is my, uh, here's my arguments and then sit down. The three speakers of each team need to work together to be able to present the best overall case for the judges. So we'll go through now what each speaker uh, is supposed to do uh, for, their, for their team. Yes, John, do you have a question? I have a question that while the two team debate, what if uh, a person think uh, a new idea, do they have to say that? Sorry, could you ask that again, John? I didn't quite hear you. Okay, while the, the two team debate, what if uh, a speaker have a new idea? Do they, they say that uh, now or they have to think about it? Ah, so that will depend. Uh, so that, that, that will change competition to competition. There are some debating competitions where they will announce... the topics uh, up to one week in advance. So they give the teams a chance to prepare. And there are some debating competitions where you don't find out the topic until 15 minutes before the debate is supposed to start. And that is all the preparation time you're given. So it really depends uh, on what sort of competition you're in. Um, Yeah, so uh, if you are only given 15 minutes to plan, then, yeah, any ideas that you can come up with, you need to, uh, yeah, you need to be able to create arguments based off of those ideas really quickly. But if it was a debate where you had uh, a longer time to prepare, then I wouldn't be so forthcoming with new ideas because if your team has developed a strategy... Uh, then a new idea or just something that you haven't checked with your other teammates that can really uh, that can really mess things up for your team so it it really depends on what which competition you're in specifically uh, as it comes to new ideas okay so let me just check my notes here <laughs> Okay. Now, 
So you'll see up the top here, I've put a few different names for both of the teams. Um, so it's important that you learn all of these names because, again, depending on the competitions that you enter, uh, they may refer to each team as uh, any of the following. So the, the, the team that agrees with the topic of the debate, they will either be called the proposition team or the affirmative team or the government. So, um, yeah, so it can be any of those three names based on, again, uh, who's running the competition and what they like to call the teams. And the other team, the team that disagrees with the topic, they will either be called the opposition team or the negative team. Okay, so the first proposition speaker, uh, they're the first person in a debate that gets to speak. Uh, and again, depending on who's running the, the competition, they may just refer to them as the first proposition speaker, or they may refer to them as the prime minister, uh, as in the prime minister of a country. Okay, so the first proposition speaker is actually probably the most important role in the whole debate um, because they are the first person that gets to speak. They essentially get to, they get the opportunity to tell everybody what the debate will be about. Olivia, yes. Well, if in um time and of debate, uh, maybe the first proper uh the first speakers, uh, a team ever, uh the first speaker of every of two teams, like maybe they are having some busy stuff and they forgot to enter the debate competition. Is it uh bad things? Um Ooh, that is a good question. Um So when you say enter the debate, do you uh do you just mean that they forgot to uh, introduce some of their ideas into the debate or do you mean that they forgot to enter the debate altogether so they're not participating? Well, they are busy for something and this thing is really important to them and they miss the chance of the first speakers. Oh, um, well, most debate competitions take place in person. So you would actually go to the building to compete in the debate tournaments. Um, so if you enter the if you entered a competition, uh, chances are that that would be the most important thing you had to do that day. So that would be what you'd focus on. It's not very often that that people would enter a competition like that and then. Uh, Go and do something else. So, by the way, very important roles. This speaker gets to tell everybody what the debate is about. First, you need to introduce. Sorry, Leo, could you ask that again? I didn't hear properly. Okay. 
Okay, so let me just, I'll, I'll type out the rest of the stuff for this first proposition speaker, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Okay, so uh, the first proposition speaker or the prime minister, uh, they get to define the debate. Now, what that means is because they are the first person that gets to talk, pretty much whatever they say is going to set the pace for the debate. So, excuse me, got the hiccups this morning, I think. Okay. So, yeah, so because they are the first person to speak, that means that they get to, uh, what am I trying to say? They get to, uh, well, yeah, pretty much uh, they 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 get to set the, the tone and the pace for the debate. So they need to bring all of their big ideas, all of their best ideas, uh, so that, sorry, I've just gone blank here for a second. Let me put that sentence together in my head. So, yeah, basically they they get to set the tone and the pace of the debate. So they want to bring all of their biggest ideas uh, to leave the judges and the audience with the strongest possible idea about what you are debating about. Does that make sense? So uh, we'll cover this a little bit more later on in the lesson when it comes to uh, yeah, when it comes to uh, learning about how to prepare for a debate with your team. <laughs> okay. Next, we have the first opposition speaker. They might also be known as the opposition leader or the leader of the opposition. So that uh, so that really, again, depends on which uh, tournament. Uh, AKA means also known as. It's an abbreviation. Okay, so the, the opposition leader 
they they have perhaps the most important job of their team and that is that they must uh, they need to redefine the debate in a way that shows the government's weaknesses and they need to present arguments that disagree with the government's point of view so uh, i mentioned the word clash earlier on uh in the in the first part of the debate whereas here we go cross arguing or clashing so clashes are very important uh in a debate and it's basically when one team is saying one thing and the other team is saying the complete opposite so you get these this clash of ideas they just do not agree with each other so when i say redefine the debate uh what i mean is is that uh, a good debate topic or a good debate motion has to be able to be argued from more than one from um, yeah more than one point of view so you know so for example um yeah so uh, again for example to go back to the example that i was using earlier of um you know is is it okay to just walk up and just punch somebody um so that debate could be framed in a, more than one different way so you can actually create an argument where you can actually argue in favor of punching somebody but uh so the difference there would be that for example um you know, if I just walked up to somebody random, I'd never spoken to them before in my life. I just walked up to them and just punched them. That's not right. That's not that's that that that's not right. Uh, but that is one point of view that you could take. It's not right to just walk up and punch somebody. But another point of view that you could take is, but is it okay to punch somebody in self defense? So. You know, this time somebody's just walked up to me and just started punching me for no reason. Is it okay for me to punch them back to protect myself? That's another point of view that we could take. So when we redefine, when I say redefine the debate, what I actually mean is putting the topic of the debate in a particular way that make uh, that makes it the best possible course of action. So that's what you've got to do. You've got to make your your team's point of view on the debate. You've got to make their point of view seem like the best and smartest action to take or decision to make. So that's what we mean when we say redefine the debate. You need to be able to take a topic or a sentence or a statement or a question and you need to be able to answer it in a way, again, that makes your idea seem like the best idea. Okay, do we have any questions before I move on to the second proposition speaker's role? Um, I have a question. What, uh, what would you do after my question <laughs> after <laughs> well have a think about it and if you remember ask me again okay i'm sorry no sorry, no, no apologies no apologies necessary mint we all forget things sometimes ken yes Can disappear. What AKA stands for? AKA stands for also known as. So it's just a shorter way of saying another name for. Teacher, what so, is POV? Point of view. So POV stands for point of view. Teacher, what is P? PM is Prime Minister. 
So the second, I'll type this one out. So deputy is just another word for like second in charge. So deputy prime minister is kind of the same as vice president. So we have here the second proposition speaker, also known as the deputy prime minister. So I'm just going to type out... Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to type out their role quickly and then we'll discuss it. Okay, so the Deputy Prime Minister, so their role is to get the debate back on track for the proposition team. Um, so what that means is, is that, so each speaker tends to be very, very persuasive and each speaker will make very good remarks that will make the judges and the audience want to be on their team's side. But the problem is that that's happening from two sides. You've got the proposition team making some great arguments and you've got the opposition team making some great arguments. So it's quite easy for the judges or for the audience to go, oh, yeah, I, I, I agree with this guy because they've made some really good points. But then they hear the other team and it goes, oh, but now I agree with these guys because they've actually made some really good points I hadn't thought of. and. So then when it comes back to the second proposition speaker, that's when they need to get everybody back on their team again, pretty much. Um, so they have a couple of jobs that they have to do. The first one is they have to rebut the arguments from the first uh, opposition speaker. And what that means is a rebuttal is pretty much a counter argument or a comeback to something that the other team has said so for example trying to put this together off the top of my head so if we're having a debate about um you, you using a topic from a couple of weeks ago or from last week at, no the first week of course it was um are desserts healthy for you so uh, you know, so uh, the proposition, so the the proposition team may make an sorry the the opposition team may make an argument and say no. Um, in fact, yeah, uh, in 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 fact, eat, eating desserts can be very unhealthy for you. You can get uh, you can get sick from too much sugar. You can develop diabetes. You can do this. You can do that. Uh, so they're making all of these arguments for. Uh, for negative health. So the second proposition speaker now needs to rebut those arguments to get everyone back on their team. So they might say something like, uh, in reference to 
my opponent's argument, they said that uh, that the sugar in the desserts may lead to lots of health complications. That comes entirely down to each person's self-control. You know, are they having a small amount once in a while or are they eating an entire chocolate cake every day? So they're rebutting that argument by saying, but it's only unhealthy if you overdo it and eat too much. And so their rebuttal is if you use self-moderation and self-control, you can eat desserts and not get sick, not get fat, not get unhealthy. So that's what a rebuttal is. It's like a counter argument that's used to say, well, what they've said is wrong. Um, and here's our correction to it, basically. So that's the first job that they have to do. And the second speaker, uh, sorry, and the second proposition speaker then also needs to present more arguments uh, that represent their own team's case. So you need to say their arguments are bad and here's why, and now here's more good arguments from us. Okay, we move on to the second opposition speaker. So we... Uh, uh. Okay. Peter, what is OL means? Uh, opposition leader. I'll put that in the chat as well. Thank you so much. Teacher, why are there always three speakers? What about five or four? Um, I honestly do not know. Uh, um, well, for the uh, for this particular type of debate with the two teams, uh, I think they they just found three speakers was the most manageable number. There are debate formats where there are actually four teams of two speakers and then there's debates where it's just multiple people that are all just on their own team. Everyone's trying to win the debate against each other. Um, I think there may even be debates where there are teams of four. Um, with this debate format, sometimes you can have teams of up to five but only three people will debate at one time. So you'll have two reserves. And when the reserves are not debating, they have other roles within the team that they need to fulfill. Um, so debating is actually an incredibly advanced uh, form of, I suppose, competitive communication. Um, you know, there, there, there are different types of debates. So you've got different sizes of teams, all sorts. Um, but for now, this is the one that we're focusing on, uh, and this one's just three on three. Ooh.
Why is it so quiet on the system? Because uh, I'm typing stuff out and I don't type and talk very well. I start talking what I'm typing and typing what I'm talking. Uh, so I think uh, the host uh, has turned off um, chats for anyone that's not a... Yeah, for anyone that's not a co-host or a teacher. Okay, so second opposition speaker, also known as the deputy opposition leader. So this speaker has a similar job to the second proposition speaker. They must get the debate back on track for their teams. They've got to shift the focus back to... the arguments that they are trying to uh, get across and the argument and the case that they're trying to win the debate with. Um, so that involves, they also have to offer rebuttals to the proposition speaker's arguments. And they also have to introduce some new arguments for their team. And now we move on to the third proposition speaker. Okay. Teacher. Yes. Is a whim government government whim? Uh, so I'm just reading through the information here, and then I'll start typing. I'll type it out for you. Teacher, do all of the speakers only talk? Do they write? Uh, during the debate, they will be talking. Uh, because. They should already have all of their arguments written down well before uh, before the debate begins. Um, as to why the uh, these position uh, the third speakers are called the whips, I will endeavour to find that out for you, and I will come back to you with an answer at a later date. But right now, I don't know why they call the third speakers the whips. Um. <laughs> yes. What is the summarize? Uh, I will finish typing this out and then I will explain it all to you. Did you watch DID? Did. It's just the word did. I've just I've just capitalized it to uh for emphasis. Okay, so the third proposition speaker, also known as the government whip. So this speaker's job is to summarise. 
And what summarize means uh, is to remind, it, it, it pretty much means to remind somebody. So if I was to give you, say, a big speech, I just talked for about 15, 20 minutes, and I listed off uh, and I gave examples of, say, five or six different arguments. So that's going to be a lot for you to remember. So at the end, I make it easier for you to remember them all, and I'll just pretty much list them all out again and remind you what the arguments that I talked about were. And that gives you a better chance of remembering it at the end. So uh, the government whip, they must summarize why their opponents did not do a good job at proving their case. So they need to list off pretty much all, all of the things wrong with their opponent's arguments. So why are their arguments weak? Why are they, why are they not? So why have those arguments not proved their point of view? Um, and they also have to summarise why their team did do a good job. So basically, you're trying to find all of the weaknesses of your opponents and all of the strengths of your own team, and you're trying to put them all in a speech and say, we did all of this really good, they did all of that really badly, we should be the winners. So that is essentially what... Uh, the government whip does. Um, they are not allowed to introduce any new arguments into the debate, but they are allowed to introduce new evidence, new rebuttals, and new examples that can help prove their already existing arguments even stronger. So they can make their already existing case stronger, but they cannot add new in they cannot add new arguments to their team's case. So that is the third proposition speaker. And finally, Yes. Um so when you're done writing, can you ask me a question? Ask you a question? What question would you like me to ask? I don't know. But it must be easy. <laughs> I don't know. I'll think of something. Okay, I'll wait. Uh, teacher. Yes. Mm, can I ask you a question? You may. Yes. Uh, when in a debate, how can we find the quickness of the other teams? And should we attack uh, on this quickness many times? Ah, very good. Um, let me finish writing this and then I will answer your question for you. Okay, so the third opposition speaker, um, we'll go over that in a minute. So in regards to these weaknesses, so you don't want to attack their weaknesses too, too, too often. You want to, you want to more so prove your own team strength. So the aim of the debate at the end of the day is to prove that your team has come up with the better arguments um, so you are best, uh, you're best focused on, um, so preparing for the debate, you're best focused on, 
uh, coming up with the strongest possible arguments for your own team and the strongest counter arguments possible against the other team. Um, you don't want to just be constantly attacking the other team too much um, because you don't want that to be your, excuse me, you don't want that to be your only weapon. You want to be able to prove your own case better than you can tear down the other team's case. But both parts are still important, but I would say making your own arguments as strong as possible is more important. Uh, okay, so third opposition speaker. So their job is the same as the third proposition speaker. Uh, they need to summarise the strengths of their own team and the weaknesses of their opponents. Uh, they cannot introduce new arguments into the debate, only new evidence, rebuttals and examples to defend uh, the arguments that have already been presented. Okay. Miss hmm. Mary, I've got a question for you. Okay. Hmm. So, we, uh, based on what we've learned about each of the speaking roles in the debate, Wait, which okay. role seems yeah. which role seems to be the most interesting one to you? That ain't all my interest one is the, the third position of speaking because speak, speaking position of speaking can sometimes help help the help our teams team to win the debate or something. Very good. So you think that the third speaking role would be the most interesting one to you because you think it would be good to be able to back your team up and make sure that you all win the debate? Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much, Mary. Okay, guys. Um, it looks like I've prepared more information, uh, more material than I expected to. So I don't think we'll have much time for the breakout activity today. Okay, so. Wait, teacher Brennan. At teacher Michael. What's up? I've got a question for you. Okay. Where am I? Where are you? Ooh. Yes. Teacher, I have a question. I give up. Where are you, Mary? I'm at my grandma's house. Very nice. Teacher, I have a question. Yes. What's your question, George? Um, how how can we find information about the topic of the debate on the internet? Ah, so um, we're actually going to cover that in a little bit. So uh, let me finish with this bit, and then we'll okay. talk about strategies to prepare for a debate. Okay. Paul. 
Teacher Michael. Yes. What are you sitting on? I see your screen shaking. You are shaking, yeah. Ah, uh, um, <laughs> uh, I've got my laptop sitting on my legs right now. So whenever I press a button on the keyboard, it just jiggles it around on my legs a bit. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, what we were talking about before on the previous uh, whiteboard here, so these are the jobs that the speakers have to do during their substantive speeches. So the substantive speeches, uh, they are pretty much the substance of the debate. Uh, these speeches are where uh, all of the arguments are made, all of the evidence is presented, all of the rebuttals are created, and all of the clashes take place. So everything that actually happens in the debate happens during the substantive speeches portion of the debate. Uh, and depending on the competition you enter, depending on the format of the debate, uh, each speaker may be given anywhere for, it's usually from about four to seven minutes uh, to deliver their substantive speeches. Um, I've seen debates and participated in debates where students get seven minutes and I've participated in debates where students have been given four minutes. And for, and that difference, actually the, yeah, the, the difference in your uh, in the substantive time can actually be quite major. So prep like preparation for these substantive speeches is of the utmost importance. Now we talk about the other speech that happens in a debate. Uh, teacher Michael. Yes. What if the people who who need to send their debate they give four to seven minutes, but if they don't give class, what do they do? They have they give. Uh, they they give the their yeah, debate at eight o'clock. I just um like uh, twenty minutes. Well, so this is why we have a moderator in the debate. So, uh, if a speaker uh, needs more time than what they've been given. Uh, that's just tough. They need to find a way to deliver their speech in the time they've been given. Um, and if they only, so say, say you've been given seven minutes to write a speech or to deliver a speech and it only takes you two or three minutes, then that probably won't go very well either because that will show the judges that you weren't prepared enough to speak for the time you were given. What? What happened if they he sent not not so early? They sent three minutes. It's not early. What happened to them? Um. What happened to them? So, like, the only thing that can really happen is if they only speak for two or three minutes. Um, the only thing that can really happen is they won't score particularly well uh, with the judges. So um, the judges will will debate your speech based on a lot of different things. So sometimes it will be, oh, not sometimes, sorry. So um, one of the things the judges are marking for is, uh, one, the length of the speech. So have you written enough? 
uh, have you written enough information in your speech for it to, for the judges to consider it a good speech? Um, the other thing is um, how you deliver the speech. So if I write a speech that if delivered perfectly should take, say, six minutes and 30 seconds, that's probably a, an ideal time to make a seven-minute speech last. Six minutes, 30 seconds. But if I deliver that speech really, really quickly, I'm speaking really fast, and it only takes me, say, three or four minutes to deliver that speech, then I wouldn't score very well. But that time it would be because I was speaking too fast. I didn't deliver the speech very well. So it can be a good speech versus a good delivery of the speech. And those are the two things that you're really getting marked on, or three things really. So there's um, how good your speech is, how good your arguments are, uh, how long it should take when you speak it say, normally, when you're not rushing to talk really fast and just going crazy. Uh, um, then the, uh, the next thing they judge you on is how you deliver the speech. So are you talking too fast, too slow? Uh, are you using your voice well? Or is it just going crazy all over the place? Like that. So all of these things the judges take into consideration when they mark you. So <laughs> it's kind of like a perfect combination of all of these different variables that will help you win a debate. You sure? Teacher, yes. are you good yes. at speaking? Are you good at speaking? Say that again, sorry. Are you good at speaking? <laughs> when I am given enough time to prepare, uh, I can be very, 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 very effective at public speaking. Teacher. Yes. I have a question. So if we are wrong and we want to speak, will it yeah. take time? Oh, yeah. Could you ask that again? When we make a mistake in the words and we want to say that again, will it take the time to, to sit our speech? Huh. I mean, you might lose five, you, de depending on how many words you need to correct, you might lose, say, five to ten. Yeah, you you might lose, say, five five to ten seconds, but that's not bad. Um, as long as you correct and then mo just move on with your speech, it's fine. Um, so judges <laughs> will not take points away from you for making mistakes they will only give you points for things you do well. So, yeah, so the judges won't turn around and say, well, you, you, you delivered some fantastic arguments, you had some really good quality evidence to prove your arguments correct, but you stuttered a couple of times and you said a few words wrong, so your team's going to lose. That will not happen. Um, yeah. Hello? Hija. Yes, Roland. Um, what happened if we win? Um, <laughs> it depends. So, um, if your team, so if it's early on in a competition and you win, your team just advances to the next round. Uh, but if it's the great, if it's the final of the tournament and you win, then your teams, then your team becomes the champions. Um, okay, so we can get prize. That depends on uh, which tournaments you enter. So some tournaments they have, uh, they have cash prizes available. Some tournaments may have, uh, they may award the winning teams a big trophy I'm on, I'm on a medal or so, something like that I'm generally trial. speaking there there is some kind of a prize wow. oh, no. 
Okay, so the reply speeches, uh, they are a chance for each team to present their own rundown of the debate overall. So this speech is more of a report from your team's point of view about how your team performed during the debate. So this is different to what the third speaker has to do. So the third speaker, for example, uh, when they're delivering their speech, they will specifically talk about the arguments and the rebuttals and the clashes yeah. during the debate. But whereas in the reply speech, this is your chance to kind of present more like a report for the judges to show them how well your team did. So during this, yeah, so during this, um, so yeah, during this, sorry guys, I just had to mute everyone there so I could finish my thought. Um, so yeah, so in in the reply speech, what you're more likely to do is talk about things that, uh, so talk about the debate in more absolute terms, I suppose. So during the reply speech, you might say something like, uh, our second speaker presented this argument and the, sec the next speaker of our opposing team, they were not able to offer a rebuttal for that argument that was raised or... Uh, this team, for example, had, uh, you know, th th this team, um, well, while they were giving an argument, uh, while they were delivering an argument, our team raised a point of information and their team did not have a response for that. So you're pointing out the things that, yeah, so this, 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 this is where you're really going to detail about the things that went well for you and didn't go so well for your opponents, basically. And each team is generally given somewhere between two to four minutes to deliver their reply speech. And the interesting thing about reply speeches Okay, now, here's the interesting thing about reply speeches. Reply speeches occur in reverse order, meaning that during the debate, the proposition team goes first and the opposition team goes second. So it goes prop, up, prop, up, prop, up. But during the reply speeches, it actually happens in reverse order. So the opposition team gives their reply speech first, and the proposition team gives their reply speech second. So that's the reason that the third speakers cannot be the reply speakers, uh, because that would mean that the third opposition speaker would get to speak twice in a row, because it would go, um, yeah, because it would go first proposition, second, first opposition, second proposition, second opposition, third proposition, third opposition. And then opposition reply speech. So you hear how it goes third opposition, then opposition reply speech. Because of that order, the third speakers are not allowed to be the reply speakers. Uh, again, because you don't want any unfair advantages from any speaker getting to go twice in a row. Uh, Ken, do you have a question? Yes, I, ha yes, I have a question. What is your question? What if your opponent, your team and opponent have a same idea? Oof.
I don't think that would happen very often because one team is arguing that the topic is good and one team is arguing that the topic is wrong. And it's very rare that you find two people that make the exact same point um, in the exact same way when they're supposed to be arguing from opposites. So, you know, so for example, um, you know, like uh, people, you know, uh, this is more on an international scale as an example. So, uh, you know, like some countries and their cultures, they might, you know, they might consider one act, uh, you know, to be extremely good and the right thing to do. And it's something that you should aim to do a you know, it, it's something that you should definitely try to do as much as possible because it's a good thing. And then there are other cultures and other countries that view that exact same act or that exact same thing to do or activity. Uh, they may consider that to be the most disrespectful, horrible, rude thing you could ever do to somebody. But we're talking about the exact same thing. So it really comes down to what team you're on and what side of the topic you're supposed to be arguing. Um, but if both teams do come up with the same idea, uh, but, you know, one team says it's good, one team says it's bad, it will really come down to which team makes their point better, who has the better evidence, who can word it better, who can speak it better. So that's really what, what that will come down to. Who can present their ideas the best? Yeah, yeah. What if the team had the same points? Uh, they wouldn't have the exact same points. Like they, they, they just wouldn't because uh, you know one team is supposed to be saying that something is this thing is positive. One team is supposed to be saying that the same thing is negative. So uh, it'll be very, very rare that you find two teams oh, with like, identical points. What if? What if the first speaker and the second speaker both have the same uh, same idea? Um, so that is where your strategy would come into play. So um, we have about five minutes left of this class, five to ten minutes left. So we started a few minutes late. So I'm not going to have time to go over strategy of debate today. I'll include that in my next lesson. So really just are there any questions that you have about today's material? Uh, let's just do a bit of a Q&A and a summary for the last 10 minutes. Olivia, yes. Well, um, in a debate, there are three speakers. And you said to us that speaker one and speaker two are two teams that are important, but which is which speaker is the most important of all? Key. <laughs> That really depends. So, so for the so for the substantive part of the debate, so while you've got the first, second, and third speakers, I would say the two most important roles are the first proposition speaker and the third opposition speaker. And the reason that they are so important is because they open and they close the debate. So, excuse me. So um, the first, oh, these hiccups won't go away. So the first proposition speaker is, uh, they have such an important job because they are the first person that you hear from during this debate. And so they get to set the first impression. They get to set the first definitions. And yeah, so they, they basically get to set the tone for the debate. So they're, they're very, very important for their team 
in regards to setting up in as strong a position as possible. So, so for example, how many times have you guys been, and this is just a, just a, the first example I thought of, but how many times have you guys been talking to a friend and they've told you something, um, you know, and you've gone, yep, that makes sense. That's cool. Yep. I agree with that. And you've learned that what they've said really, really easily. But then later on, when you come to find, uh, so then later on, when you're presented with a different point of view on that same topic your friend was talking about, it turns out that this new point of view is correct. Your friend, your initial friend was wrong. How many of you have experienced it that even though you've learned that the first thing was wrong and that the second thing was right, you still kind of want to stick to the first thing that you were told, even though you know it was wrong. How many of you have ever experienced that before? I know I've, I know I've, I've done that a lot. And the reason for that is, is that it's be because it was your first impression of the topic or the first thing you learned about that. So that tends to kind of create a very strong connection to what you've heard and learned. So by being the first person that gets to speak, you get to kind of set that this is going to be almost impossible to get this out of the people's head. You get to set that. That's why being the first proposition speaker is so important. And the third opposition speaker, the reason that position is so important is because if you get somebody that is persuasive and good enough at what they do at being this third speaker, then they do get to, uh, then, you know, then it's very possible for them to be able to um, change your mind on these issues. And the reason that that's so important is because if you're the last person to speak, you get the final say. So let's, for example, say that the third proposition speaker needed to talk about six different things but they only remembered to talk about five or they only talked about five out of six of those things. If the last opposition speaker then says anything at all to the contrary about that sixth issue that the proposition speaker missed, then the proposition speaker doesn't get another chance to go up and go, oh, I, f I, f I forgot to talk about this and mention this. Nope, too late. That issue goes unspoken. Um, whereas the opposition speaker then got to raise a new issue that the proposition speaker didn't get to deal with. So, so both teams have their their advantages in a debate. But yeah, definitely for the proposition team, it's the first speaker. And for the opposition team, it is the third speaker that's probably the most important. Teacher Michael? Yes. So... I've only just realized this, Mary. Are you laying on the floor? No, I'm laying on the bed. Are you laying down for this class? <laughs> but what's your question, Mary? Uh, I forgot. So, can you ask me another question? Um, I've got a question to take from Roland here, but have a think about your question and ask me again if you remember it. Uh... Yeah. Roland, what's your question? Um, what is the letter you write that is O L? What does that mean? Ah, uh, O L is opposition, op opposition leader. leader. Oh. So yeah, they're kind of so in 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 a debating sense, they're kind of like. I suppose if, if if you want to put it in a way based on how I've color coded these things, uh, if anyone here has seen Star Wars, um, the first proposition speaker is like uh, the Grand Chancellor, and the opposition team is yeah like like their their opposition. The I don't even know why I mentioned Star Wars. I think I got it in my head about Jedi's and Siths, but either way. Um, the, uh, the proposition team is very much 
um, very much like the government. They're trying to propose new laws uh, and get them get them put into law. And the opposition is like the their their opposing party uh, that argues against it, and they say, "No, we don't think that that." policy is in the best interest of the people we think it should be done like this and then they present how they think the law should be put into effect no um it's just been too much too much info to go through today uh to have time for the breakout rooms but we will we'll incorporate this breakout room uh, in my next lesson I should be able to double up on a couple of different things next lesson. Uh, Mary, do you have another question? Yeah. So, oh, in in third, what, what in the new year? What do you do with your friends and family? Ooh, um. I'm, to be honest, usually that busy. I don't have a lot of time to hang out with friends. Okay. Uh, but when I do, usually we just sit down and talk, maybe watch a movie or play some video games. Hanging out with friends is usually my, my unwinding time. But in the new year. Uh, in the new it... year, what, what did I do? Yeah. I had a very quiet New Year this year. I I, I just went to a friend's house for dinner. Just well, had some dinner and then. Really? Can you come to Vietnam and watch the fireworks? <laughs> yeah. I got. That I know like a it spot. Could be a lot of fun. Can you come to Vietnam and watch the fireworks on Friday night and watch the fireworks? I know a spot where you can look the fireworks really clearly. Fireworks can be quite exciting. I've seen them. Yeah. Um. Anyway, do we have any more questions about before we finish? It? We've got about one minute left. I have a question. Hello. Oh. I have a question. Okay. Well, there's... Ken, what's your question? My question is, where do you live? My, uh, my answer is I live in Australia. Okay, so um, that brings us to the end of class today. I'm going to post your homework activity in the Zalo group. Uh, and then I'll, yeah. I'm going to post your homework activity in the Zalo group. And what you will be doing, I'll, I'll post it in more detail. I'm going to provide you guys with a few, um, a list of maybe three or four topics. Each of you get to choose your choose the topic you want to do. But I want you to... Oof. I've just realized the the activity based on why did you set a timer Olivia okay so um the part of the the class that the homework was based on is actually something we didn't get a chance to do um so i'm going to rethink this homework task and come up with something for you to do that will be due by so next week there's no class the week after that will be teacher brendan the week after that uh god so you'll have three weeks to do this assign this uh this homework so i'm going to think of something and i will send it to you in the zalo group so have a wonderful afternoon guys I'll see you all in goodness three Bye, weeks. Bye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye,